The topic for today's presentation is words that have similar or identical meanings. Like in all languages, we have a number of words. Sometimes we have a concept or something that is called by a number of different names. This happens in all languages. Sometimes it's uh, development and sometimes it's from the original language. So the presentation today is going to talk about something that we all want in this life and the next life. So what I've done is I've put four three-letter roots on the left-hand side. And from these different three-letter roots, we can derive a name that means happiness. So in the first example, I've just uh, put up some information. Um, probably not everybody will be able to understand this information, but it's not important. So we have the word um, Saida Yasaidu, that's the that's the verbs that it's derived from. And the the mustar is actually saade, which means happiness. But it actually means other things. For example, in this sentence, Saade al Ma'u fil Ard, the water came upon the surface of land naturally, requiring a machine to raise it for the purpose of irrigation. So that's something that's will make somebody happy. I mean, if they want to irrigate the land and it happened just like that without anybody doing anything, this would be, you know, cause for happiness. So similarly, um, the word actually sa'ade actually means things going your way in life. It could be in this life or the next life. And related to material, related to worldly matters or internal matters, like your health. Um, so it's quite a general happiness. For example, a happy marriage or with your life in general. And it's, it refers to all life, what life has to offer and the happiness involved in that. Next, we have the word fariha, farha, which means happiness as well. And it's derived from the faraha. Actually, this type of happiness is more to do with the physical and happiness in in this life. If somebody, for example, won a jackpot, they would use probably fariha because it changes people. It's, it's more of elation. And even Allah SWT uses this word or the derivatives of this word for the people of Jannah when they um, experience the delights of paradise. So it's it's not all bad, but it has a sense of, of being of link somebody to an appropriate state. So that's fariha. So I guess you could call it um, elation. I'd probably say that's a good uh, translation of it. But obviously it's not going to translate it completely. So next of all we have um, the word sirra which means secret and from it we get the word for happiness surur. And this is actually an internal happiness, as the the meaning suggests, by sirra, which means secret. So sometimes when you see a person uh, maybe smiling, might not express exactly how happy he is inside. So this type of happiness is something that's inside someone. So that's another type of happiness. I mean, not all people express their happiness openly. Finally, Behija. From it we get two meanings, two, two of the main meanings, which is happiness, but also to become beautiful. So we know that sometimes when, when somebody becomes really happy, you can see it on their face, and the way they look changes. They become, I mean, their face becomes brighter, and as opposed to somebody who's sad, I mean, you can really tell on somebody's face, sometimes when they get really sad, their face becomes darker. So. So this type of um, happiness actually is something that's expressed or is shown on the face of somebody. So it's, there's a beauty associated with it. So that's um, four examples of happiness in Arabic language. Obviously, you cannot interchange one with the other in the language. To understand the meaning of it, you need to go back to its original root. And this is something with the language, is words can be traced back to the three-layer root 
and from it you can get further meanings of the word. I, and this is this is one of the things I love about the language. And just to demonstrate this, for example, we have the word fariha. Um, if we ch actually change, so we bring the ha first, so it's ha, and then the ra, and then the fa. Sorry about that. Yeah, harafa. See, you can change the letters around, and it actually gives uh, meanings which are related. So this is related to this in some way. This meaning here actually has a meaning of change. Elation, I mean somebody that for example wins a million dollars is going to just be over elated and you know it's going to change his state obviously and also it leads to as I said sometimes it leads to pride and um, you know somebody's just bought a new car and they're feeling really really happy and they're going around showing off their car to their friends. Fariha would be the appropriate word to use. And as I said, harafa also has a meaning of change, to change something. So for example, harafa is used in the Quran to, it's talking about when the people of the book changed the, the word of Allah. And, and the word uses harafa.